lines tell the story. Each line represents success, the transfer of genetic materials. They tell us for the first time the true value of the multilateral system of the international treaty. How people have used it, made it real. Imagine, more than 8,500 transfers every week, adding up to the transfer of 440,000 accessions in just one year, from international research centers alone. We not only have the numbers, we also have on-the-ground reports from farmers, from donors, from scientists, and from gene bank managers, because all of them contribute to the success of the multilateral system. Without them, we would not be telling this story. Here in Peru, farmers of the Quechua community have traditionally conserved some of the world's highest diversity of potatoes. With global climate change, the temperatures are shifting. They can no longer cultivate their varieties at the same altitudes that their ancestors used, but they can rely on the diversity they have maintained. We think that diversifying and increasing the biological and genetic diversity of these places is the best alternative that we have to be able to face the changes to come. Greater genetic diversity increases our ability to develop systems that are resilient. This can help the population and the local species to adapt to climate change. These farmers have established what they call a potato park, a celebration of their traditional agriculture. They have been able to re-adopt traditional potato varieties thanks to the gene bank at the International Potato Center. At the center, scientists from around the world work to conserve and improve potato genetic diversity in order to help farmers meet new agricultural challenges. This type of success is one of the reasons that the government of Peru supports the international treaty. For Peru, it is extremely important and highly satisfactory to be able to be part of the international treaty on plant genetic resources and to be able to contribute to this world effort to guarantee food security for humanity. Each year, the Potato Center sends out thousands of samples all over the world. And that is just one example. Under the treaty, 64 crops are freely exchanged none more than rice. Here in the Philippines, the International Rice Research Institute has collected more than 100,000 varieties of rice. Its staff of plant breeders and its gene bank focus on improving rice varieties to help farmers prepare for whatever future challenges the world might present. They send out an average of 200 samples a day all over the world using the treaty's standard material transfer agreement. Everyone recognizes that it's very important to send rice from one country to another, but there is a big difficult question of fairness. It needs to be used, but it must not be misused. And the treaty in general, and the SMTA in particular, gives us the confidence that when we're sending rice like that, the benefits will be shared fairly. Breeders around the world use these genetic materials sent by IRI or the Potato Center or other centers or national collections and incorporate them into efforts to improve varieties. This means farmers will have better varieties for their fields, but also, if breeders decide to commercialize their new varieties, they donate a percentage of any profits to the treaty's benefit-sharing fund a fund that promotes conservation of biodiversity and development of lesser known crops. The fund also benefits from direct donations. The government of Norway donates a percentage based on the value of all agricultural seeds sold in the country. Switzerland, Spain and Italy donate directly to the benefit sharing fund. And Sweden donates to help countries institute the treaty's multilateral system. Sweden has decided to uh, help other countries to build up the infrastructure they need to use the treaty. We can now see in the fields in those countries that Swedish investments have been to help. This financial support from donor countries has enabled the treaty to activate its benefit sharing fund and design a grant program. 
Within weeks of its first announcement, more than 300 high-quality proposals came in from farmers' groups, communities, organizations and governments around the world, all of them working for conservation and sustainable use of genetic resources. One of the proposals came from this NGO that works in Kenya and Tanzania. It is an organization that encourages farmers to use a wide variety of high-yielding crops, but also to maintain traditional crops in the field, especially sweet potatoes. We found that local varieties of sweet potatoes had become diseased and productivity dropped a lot. So we contacted the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute and the International Potato Center and they provided new varieties from their collection, which perform very well in this area. Now, yields have increased and food security and nutrition have improved. But farmers are still maintaining their local varieties. Madeleine Okoff now grows 30 local varieties of sweet potatoes and she shares them with her neighbors. For us, it's important to grow many varieties. That way we are safe if the climate change or if more bugs come. It means we have more to eat and more to sell. The option to tap into the treaty's benefit sharing fund is an incredible opportunity for us. With just a little bit of financial support, we will be able to do so much more to help small scale farmers improve their food security. This is just one example of thousands of forward-thinking conservation efforts underway in every region of the world. For them, it is not just a matter of the treaty's benefit-sharing fund contributing to their budgets. The fact that the fund is supported by donors represents a global commitment to the treaty. And for the people doing the real work on the ground, that translates into respect. With our planet facing critical challenges, ranging from changing climates to a global food crisis, now, for the governments, for the scientists, for the donors, for the farmers, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture has given the world this opportunity to connect.